And good evening. Welcome to Wednesday midweek service. If you take your songbooks and find 125, please. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. 125. You can stay seated for this one. Ready? My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. When darkness fails his loving face, I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. His oath, his covenant, his blood, support me in the whelming flood. When all around my soul gives way, he then is all my hope and stay. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. When he shall come with trumpet sound, oh, may I then in him be found, dressed in his righteousness alone, faultless to stand before the throne. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. And if you stand with me and take your Bible. Take your Bible and find the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse number 8. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse number 8, and we'll say it together four times. Good to see everybody out this evening and those watching over the airways. So 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse number 8. Ready? 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 8. Who shall also confirm you unto the end, that you may be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 8. Who shall also confirm you unto the end, that you may be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 8. Who shall also confirm you unto the end, that you may be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 8, who shall also confirm you unto the end, that you may be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. And let's look to the Lord, shall we? Father, as you settle our hearts now for what you have, we thank you for the time to come out in midweek, be instructed, be encouraged, and be comforted in thy book. Thank you for thy presence and thy power. Thank you for each precious family represented here this evening those looking over the airways those who are home uh, still recovering and uh, we pray for them we pray for dave as he or gets to talk to a cardiologist on monday and they might discover just exactly what's going on with his heart 
see Pedro's not back tonight and Levy's here, so pray for him and strengthen him and the rest of the family that are home ill. Pray for our dear Nita and Lord, the donor for her kidney. So important. And Lord, others and our church family who are going through illness, we pray, Lord, for Larica, and Lord, as she is waiting on you with the new baby and some complications that she's experiencing, pray for your grace and for your strength. Ask you now to meet with us once again as we look into thy word in a moment. Pray as we sing this uh, last song. Pray to get our hearts together in Jesus' name. Amen. 259. 259. Jesus saves. We've heard the joyful sound. Jesus saves. Jesus saves. Spread the tidings all around. Jesus saves. Jesus saves. Bear the news to every land. Climb the steeps and cross the waves. Onward to our Lord's command. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Off it on the rolling tide. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Tell the sinners my mind. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Sing ye islands of the sea. Echo back the ocean's cave, earth shall keep her jubilee. Jesus saves, Jesus saves, sing above the battle strife. Jesus saves, Jesus saves, by his death and endless life. Jesus saves, Jesus saves, sing it softly through the gloom. When the heart for mercy craves, sing it triumph over the tomb. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Give the wind a mighty voice. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Let the nations now rejoice. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Shout salvation full and free. Highest hills and deepest caves, this our song of victory. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. And good playing and good singing, you may be seated. <coughs> Hebrews chapter 13, we get started tonight. I just want to praise the Lord. I had a baby this week in Manila. <coughs> I had a baby in Manila. Talking to a girl and tell us she's in Manila. 21 year old girl took her life, tried to take her life on Sunday. So Monday I'm talking to her on the phone. Her dad passed last week. She said she's mad at Jesus. I asked the question, I don't do this always, but I asked the question after we discussed the thing about my phone, and I said, do you know Jesus? She said, I'm mad at Jesus. My dad died. I said, did your dad get a vaccine? Yes. I said, well, don't be mad at Jesus because he loves you. She said, and I slit my wrists yesterday. And you're at work today. Long story short, after about 15, 20 minutes on the phone, she asked Jesus to be her savior. And so we praise the Lord for that. So pray for her. And uh, and, you know, God makes no mistakes. And she said, this is not a coincidence, is it? I said, I don't think so. And uh, so God makes appointments. And uh, so I was rejoicing and uh, driving downtown to do some business and then pulled off to finish up with her and such a blessing. So pray for her. I won't mention her name, but pray. And I looked in Manila and to see if there's any Baptist churches. There are a few, not like ours, of course. But uh, there are a few churches there, so pray that the Lord, and because of business, she couldn't give out very much information, but the Lord knows, and so pray that um, the Lord would give her another appointment with a Christian that knows the Lord and get her into a good church. So I'm rejoicing and shouting and thanking the Lord, 
and um, called Mrs. Glennon right after and said, I just had a baby, and she understood. So how precious that is. If you ever look at animals when they eat, uh, dogs eat usually from their bowls and different animals they eat specifically, but a horse moves around when it eats, goes from here and there. So here in this final last chapter of the book of Hebrews, uh, we're going to kind of go here and there and uh, going to look at some tremendous highlights. I said last time, of course, last week uh, we missed uh, because of the cold, frigid weather. And so once again, we're here this evening and it's a balmy day. In fact, tomorrow's supposed to be plus four and uh, that's pretty good. So uh, if you have, uh, I don't have uh, Facebook, but if you do, the Kudurukos and the Morans and uh, Ellis, and they're all suffering in the Philippines at the beach at the beach. How dare they put that on the internet? <laughs> and uh, so, uh, anyway, so let's pray. Ask the Lord to open our hearts for what he has for us. Lord, again, I'm still praising you for this young lady, 21 years old, born July 13th, 2001, and born again March 27th, 2023. Pray for her, Lord, that you will be able to get her into a church and she'd be discipled. Pray now that you open up Hebrews to us. We thank you for the teaching and ministry of the Holy Spirit. We thank you, dear Holy Spirit, that you're here in our presence and all who are saved tonight have you living in them. Oh, that we might know thee more personally that we might communicate with you, might allow you to run our lives for righteousness. Bless now as we open the scripture. We pray that you open them to us. We thank you for illumination. So we ask you to bring it to life for what you have for each of us. Thank you for each precious family out this evening. Some still recuperating from uh, colds and coughs. And uh, or this is a time of year when people kind of lax and they think because it gets warm for a couple of days, they can begin to dress like it's springtime. And that's when colds and coughs and stuff jump up on them. So again, now meet with us in a very special way tonight. We ask in Jesus' name, amen. So we left off last time looking at the marriage and love and the marriage and the home and uh, the specifics about marriage. And Paul said marriage is honorable in all. Lord Jesus and the disciples went to that marriage and uh, Galilee and uh, he turned the water into grape juice and his mother said to the servants, whatever he says to do, do it. Wouldn't that be great if we all did that? Wouldn't it be wonderful if we all obeyed the Lord and were faithful to him? So we see marriage life. Marriage is honorable and all, and the bed undefiled. You read through the book of Genesis and God said it was good, 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 it was good. And all through the first uh, chapter and it was good and then verse 31 says and it was very good why well, he made man and then he said in chapter 2 it was not good what was not good that man would be alone and uh, so he make him help me so marriage is very precious and today we live and, and really over the years and generations where people are not faithful to their spouses and uh, not faithful to the marriage a covenant and contract and their vows and uh, and it's just uh, chaos unfortunately but whoremongers adulterers God will judge and he does judge them but now let's notice some comforting thoughts here and uh, first of all contentment are you content with your wages 
John the Baptist said to the soldiers in the first century, be content with your wages and uh, don't be unkind to people, don't harm people. And uh, so to be content, let your conversation, that conversation there, of course, is manner of life or conduct, be without covetousness. Covetousness, what is covetousness? Covetousness is I gotta have it. Uh, how many cars do you have to have? <laughs> how many uh, pairs of shoes do you have? How many watches do you have to have? And you get the idea. So covetousness is got to have it. And I just got to have it. And so talking about covetousness and contentment, let's go to the book of Luke chapter 12. Here we find the story of a fool. And a fool and his money will part. And uh, how sad that uh, uh, so many, so many people get themselves in financial trouble and then they expect the Lord to get them out of it. And, uh, and, and sometimes people who are born poor they get a few dollars and they want to get more. Young people often get started in marriage and want to have what their parents have and they get themselves in trouble. It takes time to accumulate finances and if people would just learn the blessings of sharing what God gives them back to him, that's called tithing. And if they would just honor the Lord with their substance, God said that he would bless them and uh, their barns would be full with plenty. Now here we have in Luke chapter 12, the story of the fool. <clears throat> and notice, <clears throat> excuse me, verse 16. But he begins, in fact, verse Monday was, uh, you can't serve two masters. Uh, mammon, mammon, of course, is money. Either you love the one, hate the other, and uh, you get wrapped up. So people get wrapped up in money. Money runs their lives. Uh, young people, they get making a few dollars. Before you know it, they quit coming to church. Uh, before you go, know it, they get to making money. They want to make more money. And so the devil know how, knows how to do that. He did it to me. And we were very poor. In fact, as a teenager, I didn't even have shoes. And I had uh, slippers with cardboard in them to keep the rain out. But very, very poor. My mother was a waitress so uh, with eight kids. So you can imagine what we had or didn't have. But when you get to making money, if you don't honor the Lord, Paul said, honor the Lord with thy substance and the first fruits of thy increase. So shall thy barn be filled with plenty. And that precious shall burst out with new wine. The idea of wine there, of course, is joy. So if we honor the Lord, look at verse 14. So Luke 12, 14. And he said unto him, man, who made me a judge or a divider over you? They're asking, of course, my brother, uh, give me my inheritance. And he said unto them, take heed. I think that's very strong. Take heed and beware of covetousness. Man came to our church back in 1985, he came to our first anniversary service. I think we had 55 people there. And I think it uh, seems like 11 people got saved that morning. And he was a prominent businessman. And uh, he, in fact, he used to own a, a very uh, um, fancy hotel and restaurant in town. And I understand that he lost it in the gambling game. Very wealthy man. And he visited our church with his wife. And of course, we were meeting at the West, or the Peter Pond Community School at the time on Franklin Avenue. And uh, when the services were over, he said, this is not a church. This is not a church. And over the years, I've run into this man. And the last time I ran into him, he said, I thought you were dead. And uh, so very unkind man, condescending man, very lost man. And uh, so that stuff walks flows off my back like water to a duck. But covetous, I'd have money. Very unscrupulous businessman he was. 
And he said to them, Take heed and beware of covetousness. And here it is. For a man's life consisted not in the abundance of things which he possesseth. So reading through Philippians, studying the book of Philippians, we saw in chapter 2 is joy in serving the submissive mind, and that deals with people. Lord willing, this week, unless the Lord changes, uh, we'll be in chapter 3, and it's the spiritual mind, joy and suffering. But chapter 4 is the secure mind, joy and supplies. And uh, Paul had a lot to say about that on the matter of finances. So life consisted not, but, but man says, if you have more toys, whoever has the most toys wins. Uh, here's the verse that refutes that. For man's life consisted not in the abundance of things which he possesseth. Now he's going to tell the story. And he spake a parable. Remember, a parable is an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. Now you can't build a doctrine on a parable, so remember that. You cannot walk on all fours. And he spake a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain man, certain rich man, brought forth plentiful. So he's talking about covetousness in verse 15. Now verse 16, he's going to tell the story. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do? Because I have no room to, where to bestow all my fruits. And he said, This will I do. Boy, how many people move away from God's will because they talk to themselves. They don't listen to the Lord. They talk to themselves. I'm going to do it my way. This is the way I see it. This is the way I'm going to do it. And uh, they get themselves in trouble. So much stuff on the Internet so much stuff in the media about finances and people get sucked in. And so he said, this is what I do. I will pull down my barns and build greater. By the way, God is not against money. First Timothy 6 says, the love of money is the root of all evil. Nothing wrong with money. If you have money, if you have more than others, you should share it and you should give to others. And, but this man, of course, was covetous and I'm going to tear down my barns, build greater, and there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. And I will say to my soul, now we know the problem with this man. The problem with this man is he was more concerned about his bank book than his Bible. He was more concerned with his body than his soul, and he paid the price. And he said, and, and I will say to my soul, so thou hast much good laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be married. And that's the way people are. Let's just party, have a good time, enjoy ourselves. James says, what is your life but a vapor that fear appeareth for a little time and then vanished away? And so what is your life? Well, that's a tremendous text. What is your life? And uh, so we ought to say, if the Lord will, we'll do this or do that. The Lord's will. How do I find the Lord's will? I find the Lord's will in God's word. And God wants me to know his will. But I'm stubborn. And I'm selfish. And I'm jealous. And I'm envious. I'm not saying all those things about myself. But I'm just saying that's the way we are. And we want it our way. You know, we think of the burger places. Have it your way. <laughs> and, uh, and someone says, I like Wendy's hot and juicy. <laughs> but Burger King is have it your way. And that's what we want. We want to have it our way. Uh, people get themselves in debt. They spend. Uh, you should not spend on your credit card. And this is just elementary, but boy, they love to get young people with credit cards. You get your credit card maxed out. By the way, if you, if you have a MasterCard, they will give you more money. If you have the Visa, they'll take away your money. So interested, in, now that's years ago, I don't know how, it's, how it is today. But uh, do not use your cards if you cannot pay them off at the end of the month. Use your cards, but pay them off. If you don't pay them off, and then so many people, and I'm not talking about finances, but it's in the text there in, in the Hebrews. But uh, if you pay just the minimum, $5, $10, 
What will happen if you if you're consistent paying the five or ten? It's the minimum. Let's say they give start you out with a thousand dollars, and they do this in universities. They send young people credit cards, knowing that their parents are going to be responsible in many cases. So they start you out with five hundred bucks. Ooh, five hundred bucks, and then you go from five hundred to a thousand. And if you pay the minimum payment. Before the year is over, you could be up to two or three thousand dollars in debt with your credit card, and if you only are paying the the interest, uh, you're never you're never going to get by. If you're only paying the minimum, you're never going to pay it off. It'll take years to pay off a thousand bucks because it's compounded daily. I wish they gave me that at the bank. I wish the bank would give me interest to compound it daily. And, uh, but they don't, and the banks, the banks rip us off. Uh, they rip us off. The banks aren't to help you. Let's say that you, I don't know why I'm picking on banks, but I am. Let's say that you wanna go get credit, and you have weak credit. And here's a person that goes to the same bank, he or she has a little bit better credit. They will give that person a better rate than they'll give the poor person. That's just wicked, and it's ungodly, and the banks are, are not our friends. And uh, so I'm just saying that, and back, back, in, the, back in the 30s, uh, you remember, Amy, back in the 30s, <laughs> back in the 40s, uh, anybody here back then? Uh, they, uh, the people in the states did not put their money in banks, and they didn't trust insurance companies because of the Depression came. They put their money in their homes. <laughs> and uh, Mrs. G. Gale, I'll call her Gale, she name's Gale, and uh, when she was a young girl, she'd go over her uncle's house. And when they're children, they'd get tired, they'd have them sleep on the floor. And they'd sleep on the carpet. <laughs> and there was, the carpets were like pillows. There was so much cash under the carpets. And uh, so people hide their money. And how many of you people got money in your mattresses or you have it in your sock or you hide it, whatever. But anyway, so here's the problem. This man said, you know, my bank book is really, I mean, when he came into the bank, they said, wow. Mr. Smith, how are you? The bank manager came out and said, so nice to see you. And can you imagine Mr. Smith saying like Abraham did when he moved from Ere the Chaldeans, I'm taking all my money. Oh, you're doing what? You're taking all your money? Uh, Mr. Abraham, please don't take all your money. We have another sister bank you can put. No, no, I'm just taking it all. I'm moving. So enough for banks. So this guy... As far as he was concerned, nothing wrong with building bigger, nothing wrong with being blessed, but he was more concerned about his body than he was his soul. I will say to my soul, verse 19, so thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Really? Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be married. And God said unto him, fool, F-O-O-L. That's not an ignoramus or stupid person. A fool is someone who doesn't trust God doesn't believe God, doesn't look to the Lord, doesn't want God to leave their life, and God said, fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then who shall those things be which thou hast provided? By the way, Philippians, back, back to Philippians, uh, chapter 2, of course, is talking about people. Chapter 3 is circumstances, but chapter 4 are things. People get so wrapped up in things. I just got to have these things, and I want more things. If I could get just more things, I'd be happy. No, money doesn't satisfy. Money does not satisfy. Only Jesus satisfies. <clears throat> Thy soul shall be required of thee, verse 20. Then who? Think about this. Solomon said about being a wise man in the book of Ecclesiastes, he said, uh, you make all that money, you can leave it to a fool. Who are you gonna leave your money to? And in fact, in fact uh, Solomon says in the book of Ecclesiastes, spend your money. You make money, enjoy it. Now, of course, that's, uh, need to be mindful of that because Solomon became very money orientated, women orientated, they ruined his life, they wrecked his life. And uh, then of course he made so much money and he was charging taxes. And uh, so he got unscrupulous as a king and money and greed and women, the Bible says outlandish women, changed his heart. 
so is he that layeth up treasures for himself, but is not rich towards God. And uh, he said to the disciples, therefore I say unto you, take heed, take no thought for your life. I've been laying out Matthew uh, chapter 6 this week with my daily memory verses to encourage us about our thought life, the matter of finances. So let's go back now. Uh, Hebrews 13, 5. Let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as you have. <laughs> Gail likes to say to me, sometimes if I look at something, just be content. Yeah, but I just, can I get a burger? Be content. <laughs> and uh, she'll, she'll tease me with that sometimes. So just be content. Well, dear, we need, no, be content. So thank the Lord if you have a frugal wife. Uh, some people, their wives, some, some girls are high maintenance. <laughs> some people are high maintenance. And uh, years ago, my son, when he was working in town, uh, when girls asked him what, what he did for a living, he said, I work at McDonald's. <laughs> so they won't come after your money. So high maintenance. And uh, so uh, if you marry a frugal wife, I thank the Lord to have a frugal wife. And uh, thank the Lord that together we can buy things, but we don't. We can buy things, but we don't. That's the difference. And if you got to have it, if you, if you have the I got to have it, you're in trouble. Because you become a member of the CIO. Everybody I see is I owe. And you get in trouble. And so be content. For he said, and what, what tremendous verses they are. These are in the conclusion of the book of, of, of Hebrews. For he had said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Just think about that. I will never leave thee. I told this young girl Monday after she asked the Lord to save her, I said, look at your hand. Because if you looked at her wrist, you can see where she tried to kill herself. Look at your hand. Look at your baby finger. Jesus said, I will never leave thee. I said, now look at both of your hands. She's crying like a baby by this time. I said, look at your thumb, your right thumb. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. She saw that. I said, now take your right hand and put it on your left shoulder. Take your left hand and put it on your right shoulder and squeeze. So the Lord is with you and he will comfort you and he'll strengthen you. So I will never leave thee. And that is a double negative. I will never, 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 never leave thee. Think about that. Think about the fact that we have the Holy Spirit living in us. He sealed us under the day of redemption, and God can't die. So I can't die until God is ready to take me to heaven or when Jesus comes, but I'm sealed. I cannot lose my salvation. It's free. It's by faith, and it's free. I mean, it's free. Think about that. <laughs> what does it cost? What should a prophet of man? He should gain the whole world. Hey, Mr. Gates or Mr. Uh, whatever those guys are named with all that money. Where, where are you going to do? Where are you going when you die? Because you ain't taking it with you. Those five, let's think of the five richest men in the world, just five of them. They can take care of the entire world. The entire world. Um, Elon is worth a hundred and some billion. Uh, um, the guy that owns... Uh, Amazon, well, that's another trick, isn't it? And uh, I'm just getting it out here tonight. But I mean, think about it. It's very easy, isn't it? Now, go shopping. Let your let your fingers do the shopping. The yellow pages. No, now it's take your cell phone, look to Aunt Amazon. Got to have it. Got to have it. Got to have it. And they hound you. If you look at something, I looked at some covers one time for the air conditioners in the church. Every other day, I was getting another cover. Every other day, getting something else. And I ordered some, uh, some uh, treats for the children, uh, cupcakes and Twinkies and stuff. Man, they're bombarding me with stuff. Bombarding me. That's, that's business. But they, they just hound you. So again, uh, thank the Lord. I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. That's contentment. Now, go to Philippians. I mentioned it. Let's just go there for a moment. Philippians chapter 4. So wonderful. Hard for me to hold back. Sometimes I want to just get all this book of Philippians in front of us. But Philippians 4, verse 
Philippians chapter 4. So, for a time, the church at Philippi was supporting Paul. And something happened to their finances and they stopped supporting him. You know, and the church, churches that support missionaries, if something happens to the church, missionaries are done. They will stop supporting missionaries. By the way, if God called, and here's the problem with missions. Here's the problem with church finances. People come to church, they become a part of church. Now, I know somebody is, uh, has it in their mind that maybe they're going to be moving away, so I'm not picking on you tonight. But uh, people say, okay, I'm going to give to the missions. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And then they leave the church. Well, the missionary is, is, is laid up with not getting fined. Why? Because people quit. People say, I'm going to join the church. I'm going to start giving the church. And then they move away and things happen. So we need to be mindful of our finances. And Paul is saying here in Philippians 4, would you notice? But I rejoice in the Lord greatly. Again, what's the key for the book of Philippians? J-O-Y. That now at last your care for me hath flourished again. Where you were also careful, but you lacked opportunity. Not that I speak in respect of want, for I've learned. What a verse. I've learned in whatsoever state I am to be content. That is powerful. I've learned to be content. Contented. And you can couple that right back to Hebrews 13.5. For I know both how to be abased and I know how to abound. Everywhere, in all things, I'm instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. And there's the verse. I can do all things through Christ. That doesn't mean you can jump in front of a train, run across the street without looking. That means what God wants you to do, he will enable you to do it because he gives you the Holy Spirit. I can do all things through Christ, which... Strength me. Now look at look at this look at this word. Communicate and communication. Notwithstanding, verse 14, you have well done that you did communicate with my afflictions. Affliction, affections, afflictions. So that's finite. Communication there means money. Now you Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church. And here is the, here's the answer for you. By the way, you don't need to know Greek to read the Bible. You have a King James Bible. You don't need Greek. You don't need Hebrew. The English for us is tremendous. You Philippians know also at the beginning of the gospel when I departed from Macedonia, no church communicated with me. And here's the, here's the answer to verse 14. <clears throat> with me as concerning, see it, giving and receiving, but ye only. And uh, so again, Paul is thanking the, the people at Philippi that they gave and then they quit giving. Uh, sometimes a new preacher will come to the church and he's not for missions. A good godly man told me years, years ago, uh, you're the first missionary. If the church doesn't support you, you lose the church. Don't support missionaries. That was 38 years ago we came here. The first missionary that came to Fort McMurray, by the way, nobody just drives by Fort McMurray. <laughs> nobody said we're in the neighborhood. Now, if you live in Edmonton, Calgary, places like that, metropolises, people are always coming by and knocking on your door. Hey, go on the mission field, which is fine. And so our first missionary, we took on our first missionary the first year that we were here. And 38 years later, we still support missions and support them for a lot of money, $150 a month. When I first started out, I got $10 a month, $25 a month, and a lot of that support, they would end it, they would never even write you a letter and say, we're dropping your support, they'd just drop it. And, uh, but you know, the Lord is so gracious, he takes care of us. I believe he takes care of our church because we support missions. But now, what happens in the church when you're teaching on finances, if I said, let's have a mission week, we're gonna give the missions, and we've done that, we do that, we have mission conferences, what happened? People quit tithing and they started giving the missions. Right now, our church missions is stronger than our giving, than our general giving. People are giving the missions. We thank the Lord for that. Our mission account, we have more money in our mission account than we do in our general account. And so if I, if I stop and say, okay, we're going to have a mission emphasis, what do you think people are going to do? They're going to start giving the missions. So the Lord is taking care of our missionaries, and I praise the Lord for that. 
and the Lord is taking care of us, and he will take care of us, and he does supply our needs, and I praise him for that. So, verse 6. So there we have contentment. Uh, verse number 6. Now we have comfort. So that we may boldly say, boy, if we could get the, just grab one of these verses and get it in your heart. So that we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. Man, I sure like that. The Lord is my helper. And I will not fear what man shall do unto me. Look at, uh, look at your Bibles. Look at Psalms 118. Psalms 118 and verse 6. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear with man. What can man do unto me? What can man do? Puny man. What are they going to do? They're going to die one day. So we don't fear man. We fear the Lord. But now, if you have a King James Bible, some people, why do you use King James Bible? Because it makes Jesus look better. It talks about the blood. But the center verse now, if you don't have a King James Bible, you have these other versions. They take out verses. They take out verses. So you don't have all the verses. And you don't have all the chapters, 1176 chapters, 739,642 verses. And the center verse of our King James Bible is Psalms 118, verse 8. It is better to trust in the Lord. That's the center verse of the King James Bible, the Lord. Notice it's all caps. That's Jehovah. Then to put confidence in man. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in what? Or in who? Princes. So we trust the Lord. We depend on the Lord. We look to the Lord. Uh, why do people quit on Christianity? Why do people quit on Christianity? Because hmm? it's lonely. Wantonness. One of the quirks, quirks and the difficulties of Christianity is wantingness. Nobody wants you. If you're a Christian, they want you in their business because you don't steal or you shouldn't steal. And you can be honest, but they don't want you as a Christian. Uh, you may have neighbors and you may, you may take care of your home, and I hope you do. And your neighbors appreciate that, but they don't want you as a Christian. Wantingness. And that's why people quit. Uh, Jesus was forsaken by all 12. Judas betrayed him. Peter denied him. His brothers and sisters denied him till after the resurrection. His own countrymen denied him. So when you think about that wantingness, one of the effects of the Holy Spirit, Jesus said, I'm alone, but I'm not alone because the Father's with me. And we sing the song, he promised never to leave me, Never to leave me alone. You have the Holy Spirit in you. We're never alone. We may be lonely. I understand, by the way, some girls in our church, once again, are dating lost men. I, I, I preach to get it. I warn them, but they don't want, they get lonely. I understand that. They get lonely. And because they get lonely, they take their eyes off the Lord before you know. And by the way, why do young teenage girls get pregnant and get in trouble? All they want is some affection. They don't want sex. But they get mixed up when they get wrapped up with boys that want the wrong things from them. So it's a vicious circle, a vicious circle. And that's why God gives to us the Holy Spirit who guides us, who helps us. You're going to make a trip? Is God in that trip? You're going to move? Is God in the move? You're going to purchase that home? Is God in that home? Years ago when I was in Bible college, and was graduating, a man of God who's in heaven, wonderful man of God. By the way, he supported us and helped us get this church. He gave us three of the sweetest thousand dollars you could ever look at. Poor, poor preacher. I mean, a poor preacher. He said, three things stop people from serving the Lord. Marriage, death, and a, and a baby. You think about that. You think about that. 
marriage, death, and a baby. And I want to add a fourth thing, a new house. A new house. You get busy in a new house, you don't have time for the Lord. You're going to take your tithe and put it in the house. And that baby, that baby one day is going to walk away from you and break your heart. Yes, we love them, we care for them, and so forth. But how important it is to be content. How important it is to trust the Lord and depend on him for comfort. <laughs> the Lord is with you. Notice what he says. So that we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. <laughs> Psalms, I love the Psalms. I will lift up my eyes into the hills from what cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord that made heaven and earth. I will not fear what man shall do unto me. We don't fear man. We trust the Lord. Preachers fear man. I'll tell you why preachers get in trouble in the ministry. They fear men. They want to plead. They are man pleasers and they get themselves in trouble. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Fools despise wisdom. So, comfort, courage, contentment, <laughs> commitment. Look at verse 8. We're going to pass over verse 7. As I say, we're taking a little food here, a little food there. But look at verse 8. Jesus Christ's immutability. Immutability. What does that mean? It doesn't change. Same yesterday, today, he doesn't change. God doesn't change. He's consistent. Hallelujah. He's consistent. He's faithful. And by the way, you can't figure him out. Some say, well, I did this and God blessed that. I did this. He didn't bless it. No, you can't figure God out. But he's the same yesterday. The God of the Old Testament is my God. Can God furnish the table in the wilderness? <coughs> Psalm 73. They said, no, God can't furnish the table. God did fable, finish the table. God can. God can meet our needs. God can supply our needs. But you have to start by giving to the Lord. Giving to the Lord. If you don't give to the Lord, you're in trouble. You're going to bury yourself in a hole. You're going to dig a hole. And then you're going to blame God. I can't tell you how many families in our church, they don't give. They don't give. Families in our church, they do not give. And I'm not angry on them. That's on them. <laughs> I found the secret to money. Give to the Lord. Uh, the Lord will be no man's debtor. You give the Lord, God will take care of you. I have so much money coming in, I can't stand it. I think I'm about $25,000 a month I have. Good. People just send me money. It just comes in. I think last month we got $25,000. People just send me envelopes. I'm teasing. But the Lord meets our needs. He meets our needs. And he meets your needs. We just have to follow the principle of his word. And meet, he meets our needs. I can't tell you how he meets our needs. You figure, oh, well, you shouldn't give it away. If it was up to me, she'd kill me. If it was up to me, I'd just give it away. Just give it away. And, uh, but seriously, she's a giver too. But, uh, but you give and God give. God's got a bigger shovel than ours. Give and it shall be given you, Luke 6, 38. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall man give in your bosom. Now watch it. For the same measure that you meet with all, it should be measured. If you're stingy, God is stingy. If you're stingy, God's stingy. By the way, look at your handwriting. You ever do this test? If you write teeny weeny weeny weeny, you're cheap. If you write, look at your, if you write, you're cheap. If you write big, you're a big giver. Uh, back in, in days gone by in our church, people fell out their, their, uh, Get acquainted. Car, by the way, I'm glad this fellow's back. He's going to have a talk with you, but I'm glad he's backing. But they fill out their card, and this person filled out a card one time. You needed a magnifying glass. <laughs> and, and I could look at that and say, they're not giving. <laughs> and I don't mean that to be derogatory, but look at that little chicken. Oh, my goodness. How did they write it so small? They must have had a magnifying glass. <laughs> so oh, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hey, old lady. Hey, old lady, I want you to make me some cornbread. Yeah, but I'm going to make bread for me and my boy, and then I'm going to die. I said, make me some cornbread. Yeah, but if I make you the cornbread, I, this is the last I have, and I'm going to die. Would you take care of the man of God, please? Okay. She made it, and every day she went to the cupboard, there was more meal. Every day she went to the cupboard, there was more oil. 
You cannot give God. And better take care of God's men. Now, I'm not asking for an offering here, or I'm not offering for a raise. I don't need a raise. And uh, I haven't had a raise in, I don't know, 20 years or something. But I'm not asking for it. And that's not my purpose, because if I do that, I would do it Sunday morning. <laughs> no, I'm not. But you can't outgive God. Now, have you ever thought about this? I love the Bible. Have you ever seen ravens eat? Ravens ain't giving up nothing. If you drop out a French fry, they will swoop down and kill one another over French fry. But God said to Elijah, I'm going to feed you with bread and, and water. You're going to get the water out of that pool and that brook, but I'm going to send you meat from the ravens. What? <laughs> if you had to depend on a raven at Fort McMurray, you'd be dead. And uh, because I'm saying they walk on our hood. We go to we go to Burger King or, or Wendy's when we've done it in a while. But uh, and, and they have such padding under their feet. I thought I'm going to kill that bird. He's going to scratch the car. No, they have padding. They walk up there and look in. What do you got there? <laughs> and then they flew right on the remote mirror and they looked in and said, "Okay, okay, come on, I'm waiting, I'm waiting." <laughs> and uh, Simmons glanced at me throughout the whole Burger What did you do throughout the whole burger? I said, "Well, we'll see what happens." <laughs> I don't love it, but it's interesting in new neighborhoods when people first come to Fort Murray in the wintertime and they put out their garbage in bags, I say, you're in trouble, buddy. <laughs> you are in trouble. They're going to rip you off. And I guess that's why the city gave us these plastic bins. I'm talking about the Lord is consistent. He is consistent. He will never fail you. You can be content and, and he'll give you all you need. And we have the old Bible to produce it and to show it to us and to prove it to us. God meets our needs. God meets our needs. David said, I've been young, I've been old, yet I've never seen the righteous forsaken or begging bread. Boy, how God meets our needs. I can't tell you how as missionaries we started out and how God had to humble us because we were making a lot of money and living very well and then we surrendered and God had to take me to the school of finances and had to trust him and look to him. And, uh, and he met our needs. And, uh, and it's been a wonderful, wonderful time serving the Lord, how he's met our needs. But we walked away from money. And then God had to humble us and uh, gave us the, uh, actually gave us the Antichrist's wife's vehicle, a 1978 Mercury Granada, right out of hell. But anyway, <laughs> went from Cadillacs and Corvettes and the Lincolns to driving that. <laughs> and we went from that to a gremlin. Anybody know what a gremlin is? The ugliest car you ever seen in your life. Three-speed gremlin. <laughs> ugliest. Blue? Was it blue or was it green? Yeah, we had a choice. Blue or green? Ugly green. I don't care for green unless it's money. But uh, green is not my favorite color. Makes me look Chinese. <laughs> but... Uh, this guy from our church said, I'm going to give you one of these cars. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> and we had that old piece of junk gremlin, and uh, we were traveling, raising his sport in a motorhome, and it was tied up to the back of it on a, with a tow chain, and it was raining cats and dogs. We were in Ohio, or from one meeting to another, and, uh, and it was raining. I mean, it was cats and dogs and elephants. It was raining so hard. And my wife said, something's wrong with the back end, dear. I said, well, go see. That gremlin was going all over the road. The chain had come loose. Oh, my soul. So that's, it's there flying back and forth. And uh, not, not the chain, but the ball came loose. And so it was just on by the chain. So I'm trying to slow down, slow down, slow down. Because I knew if I slowed down too fast, it would go right in the back end. It went right in the back end. So I'm out there jumping on it, pouring down rain, raining like I said, animals. And I'm jumping on the bumper trying to get it out of there. You think people would stop? You think, and I'm saying, Lord, <laughs> Lord yeah, well. he took care of us. He always takes care of us. My wife got cancer unexpectedly in 83. We were just start, we we're going to Texas. I might have met Mandy, the family. We we're going to Texas to raise support. And lo and behold, she got cancer, and we're living in a motorhome, and it's December of 1983. So we followed her parents to Florida, had no meetings whatsoever, no meetings. Had a 
was it 503.25 motor home payment. $503.55. I didn't have but $200 coming in. $200 was our, what we had coming in. And that $200, unbeknownst to me, I found out later, was from a man in the church that was my soul winning partner and bus ministry partner. He was given the $200. And then that went dry. But anyway, had no meetings. We're there in Florida. And, uh, and the Lord opened up churches for us opened up churches for us. And uh, so, so God just is just saying, can you trust me? Same yesterday, today, take care of that widow, he'll take care of you. And then, <laughs> can you imagine Elijah? I love the story. Elijah, when he got through the ravens, they quit coming. Of course they quit coming. I think they opened up a Big Mac or something in the neighborhood and they started going there. And anyway, <laughs> but can you imagine when God said to him, go to Arafat, uh, there's, a, there's a widow woman there She's going to sustain you. You know that preacher thought she's probably a pretty woman, probably loads of money. She's a widow, and she'll take care of me. And they found out she was a poor woman. And, uh, but you know the Lord will take care of you. He's so gracious. And uh, so, <clears throat> Jesus the same yesterday, today, and forever. The Jesus of the New Testament is the I am of the Old Testament. I am. I uh, am. Who are you? Um, I'm Jesus. Who are those two guys with you? Well, they're angels. And uh, what are you doing in my tent? Well, I've come to see you and, and Sarai. And, uh, ooh, Sarah, get him some cakes. Young man, go kill a lamb or something. We need to feed these guys. It's Jesus. Ooh, wow, well, it's the Lord. Sarah's in the tent. She's 90 years old. Anybody here 90? He's 100. And the Lord said, about this time next year, you're going to have a boy. You're going to have a baby boy. Sarah said, are you kidding? <laughs> Sarah couldn't contain herself. And by the way, Abraham left also. And God said, yeah, you're going to have this time next year, you're going to have a baby. And uh, Sarah laughed. And he said, you laughed. She said, I didn't laugh, Lord. Yeah, you laughed. What happened next year? You can mark it down. Wah! 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 There's the baby. Another time. Elijah was, was a famine in the land. And Elijah said, by this time tomorrow, food prices are going to drop. And the servant of the king said, if God opened the windows of heaven, it wouldn't happen. And Elijah said, it's going to happen, but you're not going to eat it. And when the food prices went down and the food was plentiful, uh, what happened? They ran over the servant and he died at the threshold. Why? He didn't trust God. We just need to trust the Lord for finances, his faithfulness, to be content to be, have courage, and by the way, we think of courage, I think of Joshua. Did you know that Joshua was not a courageous man? Although him and Caleb wanted to go into the, to, um, um, the promised land, Kadesh Barnea, and said, we'll go in, let's go in. But there came a time when Joshua became the leader, and you remember when they went to Ai, and of course, when they went to Ai, and Achan stole the food, or the gold and silver, and his family died. But, uh, but I never saw this before until this week. But Caleb, Caleb gave up. Caleb said, let's go back to Egypt. Let's go back on the other side of Jordan. Why? Because he gave up because he thought God wouldn't provide. And God said, get off your feet. There's sin in the camp. So God will provide for us. God does provide for us. God does meet our needs. God promises to satisfy because the world doesn't satisfy. You think those multi, multi billionaires, you think they're satisfied? No, they want another billion. They want to, if they could just get another billion, they'd be happy. Money doesn't bring happiness, only Jesus brings happiness. Shall we stand together? Contentment, courage, comfort, commitment. Same yesterday, today, and forever. Oh, my Lord. We would believe these, these verses here in Hebrews. Content. Be content. Don't be covetous. Be content. Don't look at your bank book. Don't look at your body. Think about your soul and think about eternity. Life is short. Eternity is long. So Lord, help us to be for you and about you. Help us to look to you. Help us not to look to man. So many preachers quit because they look to man. 
Maybe there's a rich man in the church and they look to them for support. And maybe there's some families in the church and they're going through some sin in their life and the preacher holds back preaching about it. But we must preach the word. We must be instant in season, out of season. We must reprove, we must rebuke, we must exalt, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine for the time has come when they don't care. They don't care. They just don't care. And Lord, thank you for these who've come out this evening. I know others could be here, but maybe ill. And then we have a lot of people out of town that normally are here on a Wednesday night. But thank you for this Wednesday night service. Thank you for these who've come out. And uh, Lord, to know that you will never leave us. To know that you can do, we can do all things that you want us to do, not stupid things, but that which you want us to do, you provide. You give us the power of the Holy Spirit and so much, and so much that we have in him. So much. Help us not to grieve him with sin. Help us not to quench him by trying to do things on our own. Help us not to resist his leadership. Help us not to vax him with continuation of sin in our lives. God, help us to live holy, consecrated, dedicated, godly lives. Lord, how people cry out when they're in trouble, but just daily to have a night's sleep, to have a pillow, to have a warm blanket. We have so much, and yet, some are not satisfied. And we have you, the God of the world, the God of this world who created it and all that's in it. Lord, help us to depend on you. Thank you for the old, Jesus concealed. Thank you for the New Testament, Jesus revealed. Same, same God that Moses had same God Elijah had, same God that Epaphroditus had, same God Paul had. Lord, we have so much in Jesus. We have you, Father in heaven, on your throne, directing, guiding. You have, we have thy son, seated at thy right hand, interceding on our behalf. 